Yes, so uh, our company, a little bit of uh, background on BlueStacks. We're about 40 people uh, based in California. Um, we've got uh, two main products. The first one's called App Player, uh, and it's still in beta. It came out in March 2012, and it can let any mobile game run on PC or Mac. We had no idea if anybody would want to run Android games on PC or Mac, but we now have crossed uh, 20 million users of that product. Uh, and actually, a lot of developers use it uh, instead of the Google emulator uh, as a dev tool as well. So today we're going to talk about mobile games on TV. This is a brand new uh, space, uh, as Oscar outlined, uh, where we are now um, and how we got here. A lot has changed in the last five years, uh, a lot. Uh, console has drifted downwards and older, and you guys, by making these great mobile games, have really exploded the space, and we've got this blank canvas on TV that we're going to fill. The shifts that are happening this year, and most importantly, can developers make money? Uh, I'll give you a hint, the answer is yes. Uh, it's a matter of uh, when and how. So let's go back to 2007. Consoles ruled TV gaming. The Xbox 360 had come out, PS3, the whole seventh generation of consoles. And one theme of this talk is kids. I, I uh, am particularly interested in the upcoming generation of gamers. And kids in 2007 were playing the Wii like crazy. A lot of people don't know this, but the Wii actually outsold PlayStation and Xbox, respectively, by 50% each. The most popular gaming console of the seventh generation. Mobile gaming in 2007 was uh, not so hot. Uh, carriers ruled the world. Uh, feature phones had games. And, uh, and smartphones like Blackberry and uh, Palm were doing well and had some gaming. Uh, but it certainly was nothing like today. So 2007, Mario was beating mobile by a lot. 2008, a guy named Steve Jobs got on a stage in California and said, we're going to have an app store in this new iOS uh, uh, operating system we've built for this new iPhone thing. Uh, it was very controversial. Steve Jobs himself didn't even want to do it. Uh, his management team convinced him uh, to let third parties build applications for the platform. And people didn't even know if the iPhone was going to do well. Uh, as I mentioned, Blackberry and Palm and others were, were killing it, and these guys were known for making music players. Flash forward to today, totally different world, right? Over a billion smartphones are now in use in the world. Over one billion people. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around <laughs> that number, but that's a giant potential for you guys on the phone, obviously. Uh, and it's really helped proliferate mobile content, uh, all the hit games that we've talked about at this conference. What's going on on the console side? Uh, not so good. Eighth generation launches, the Wii U, uh, very recently. Uh, sales have been dismal, really scary bad. Uh, and remember, this was the console that was beating everybody in 2007, and now very few have been sold. This is one of my favorite uh, stats. So of all time, the last 10 years plus, uh, Halo, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, has sold 50 million units. In the last several years, Angry Birds uh, has had over 1 billion downloads. Now, I know this is not apples to apples, obviously. There's no free version of Halo. Uh, but just mind share wise, the fact that a billion times somebody has said, I want Angry Birds, uh, really shows the seesaw headed in the mobile content direction. So gaming on TV is still going. People are still excited about PlayStation 4, Xbox uh, uh, One, and they're buying some Wii U's, but they're getting older along with consoles. The average age of uh, the console gamer is now, according to Polygon, 37, according to another big study, 31. Certainly, when I started playing uh, Super Mario Brothers years ago, uh, this age was way less. So remember, the youngest upcoming generation of gamers, and I think that's the ones we should be focused on in terms of building our businesses long term, medium term, uh, they're not uh, playing console games on their TV. Their TVs are empty for all intents and purposes. Now some big guys are getting into the space of mobile on TV. <laughs> some of you may recognize this. I think I Googled big Russian guy and I got this guy. So you guys probably know him better than me, but <laughs> he's a giant. Some other giants, Google, Chromecast has announced this year is actually available in the market, just $35 for one. It's gonna be media focused for now, Google just retired the Google TV uh, moniker and it's come out with uh, calling them Android TVs. So you're going to see a lot of movement there. Amazon's got a set-top box. They just announced it's going to be delayed. 
Uh, but you're going to see gaming come through that eventually. And Apple has come out with a video game controller standard. This is a huge deal. And we all know Apple's coming out with a TV themselves uh, soon. So I know a lot of you are already building your games around the fact that these controllers uh, are coming and being integrated into mobile gaming. Another big development this year, and we uh, as BlueStacks have a horse in this race, uh, going to give an unbiased uh, overview here of the space, but the micro consoles are born. What is a micro console? It brings mobile games to TV. We're talking Android games. Apple is obviously very, very closed. You don't want to mess with them uh, technologically or legally. Uh, so they're Android based. They're a small form factor. They're usually about this big. And they use HDMI uh, on smart TVs and not so smart TVs. Uh, a lot of people equate sort of this micro console thing with smart TVs, but in actuality, uh, you don't need a smart TV. You can just plug these consoles into the HDMI port, like a PlayStation. Some of the players here will go through. Ouya, this is probably the biggest name uh, since they had their Kickstarter campaign, the second uh, highest uh, raising Kickstarter campaign ever. Um, and despite you know, some of the recent uh, ups and downs of Ouya, I think it's a really big credit to them uh, and a really big signal to all of us that 63,000 people said, I want to play Android games on my TV. Uh, as I said, the second biggest Kickstarter campaign ever. Free, all the games are free to play. It's 99 bucks sold through retail. Uh, you guys keep 70%. They have their own store. They keep 30%. And they have an SDK that you've got to integrate. They've got some menus you've got to rearrange so that it'll work with their console. GameStick, this is by PlayJam. PlayJam uh, has a legacy of building smart TV games. And this thing's coming out very soon. Uh, I think about a month away. It's not out yet. Another Kickstarter project, 79 bucks through retail. They're being sold, uh, I believe, at GameStops. Uh, I'm not sure how much they're going to charge for the games, but again, it's premium. You go in there and you've, you've got to pay to play each game. Same split, same deal. SDK and uh, some changes to your game in order for the submission to go through. Here's us. This is BlueStacks' game pop. Uh, we have a very different business model. So instead of paying per game, uh, it's subscription-based. So it's $6.99 per month for the user. Uh, the press is calling it the Netflix for games and they get access to 500 games. A lot of those, I'd say most of those, are paid games. So these are games you'd pay $1.99 or 99 cents for on your phone and actually you get them included in your subscription. Uh, we share, by the way, 50% of all of that money, about $84 a year per user, with developers. And we divvy it up by time and app. So we're sharing all that back and plus uh, we do not dip into IAP. So we work with Google on the back end for uh, Google Play integration. And you guys don't need to change your app at all. There's no SDK, there's no menu changes. There's a lot of engineering work so that the controls for the game work uh, you know, from our controller and our, you can actually also use the phone as a controller, work with your game, but we do all of that engineering on our side. Mad Cats, some of you may know, is a popular uh, game accessories company uh, for PC gaming. This is also not out yet. By the way, Game Pop's not out either. It's coming out uh, this winter. And we've signed some developers, uh, gr uh, Glue, Gree, uh, uh, Tinyco, Half Brick, Nevosoft from here. Um, so Mad Cats is coming out eventually as well. They've uh, demoed a prototype at E3 and other places. Uh, same kind of thing, except they also have, uh, like us, Google and also Amazon uh, as their back end. Um, and you can just kind of run wild in those stores and, and play games that have game controller integration. The million dollar question, can developers make money? Honestly, it's not going to be a lot at first. This is, I describe it as Roku 2002, Roku Netflix 2002. Streaming was brand new, uh, you know, it was a totally kind of foreign thing to the majority of people, uh, particularly in the non-techie universe. You were lucky if your cable provider, you know, had a digital UI. Uh, but now we take for granted that Roku and Netflix have tens of millions of customers and it's very popular. I think it's early days, but I think the people who get ahead of this curve are gonna be very, very happy that they did. So one analogy is Gameloft. When that iPhone came out, Gameloft jumped all over it. Now remember, it sounds obvious now, of course, Gameloft, iPhone, you know, making lots of money. But actually back then, the iPhone was very controversial, whether this thing would be worth doing. And they went out there and they put uh, a bunch of games, they spent a lot of money porting games to this new platform, and now they're one of the top iOS, uh, top grossing uh, developers. Who are likely to be the users for these uh, mobile games on TV? I don't think it's the, uh, the 37 year old guys uh, like Colin Farrell uh, having a cigarette. I think that uh, mobile games are really the uh, domain 
especially in terms of casual gaming and even mid-tour gaming, of the very young uh, eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds borrowing mom's phone. I think that's the majority of the billion smartphone uh, users, at least as it pertains to us. I think it's going to be uh, the, the youngest generation, uh, as I keep mentioning, that's coming up. Uh, I meet kids all the time who have never heard of Mario, and they all know Angry Birds. They all know Temple Run, Subway Surfers. We actually did a demonstration of Game Pop at a mall in Dallas, Texas, uh, purposely outside of Silicon Valley in New York. And uh, we put, uh, we had a prototype with these, these games that you guys have built playing, and kids run across the mall to play it. Um, it's also a really social experience on TV, as one 10-year-old told me, you know, oh, my friends don't have to come over and all look and hunch over my phone. Now they can all, as one, one little sister kept doing, point at the screen when the kid was playing Candy Crush and say, go here, go there. So it actually opens up, as Oscar mentioned, some other avenues for making the game really cool. I'd encourage you to also see this uh, through the lens of content. Um, so as I mentioned, these mobile games uh, are the ones that kids know today, and they're not on TV. They're definitely headed to TV. The momentum is definitely there. Um, and, uh, and they're just not there yet. Instead, it's all this violent stuff that a lot of parents I talked to at that same mall in Dallas told me, you know, not only do I not want to spend $400 on an Xbox uh, Live and $60 for every game, huge delta, right, between that and what we're talking about here, uh, but uh, the games are very violent. I was at E3, and it's kind of frightening, actually. Uh, it's really gone in that hardcore direction as the audience has gotten older. So you guys own the games of the future, and the kids coming up want to play them, uh, and I believe on their TV. We've got a technical perfect, uh, perfect storm of sorts going on right now. This is hit in 2013. It's the first time in history that the pixel density on a smartphone is actually higher than it is on a 60 or 70 inch TV. Pixel density is, is, is denser than it is on a huge TV. What does that mean? That means that your games already look beautiful on TV. There's been no time in history that there's been such a huge ecosystem of games ready made for a platform that's got 222 million uh, TVs sold last year, uh, ready for them. It's just a matter of figuring out the controls and how to actually deliver this content into the living room. But it's coming. There's just a bridge that needs to be built. Uh, that bridge is actually getting easier because uh, the second thing that's happening is a commoditization of the hardware. So the hardware is getting a lot, very cheap. It's, it's not an accident that Google's able to sell Chromecast for $35, even $99 for Ouya. Uh, we're not talking 400 bucks, 500 bucks, right? These things are, getting, uh, are cheap and they're getting cheaper. A lot of these Android uh, dongles uh, are coming out of China, and they're pretty well made, actually. So what can you do? I think about game controller support. A lot of the bigger guys are already doing this. Uh, many of you are doing this uh, uh, already. But uh, I think a year or two from now, when one of these many players really hits it, and the, these games are already coming to TV very fast, uh, the new hit game that you guys are developing back at your offices right now, you'll, you'll be happy then that you integrated game controller support when maybe the Apple TV is out and, and others using this new standard. Uh, you could team up with one of the micro console companies out there. All of us are uh, eager for you guys to come bring your content uh, uh, to TV. At the very least, I'd, I'd pick up a couple of these things. As I, as I mentioned, they're pretty cheap and just play around with them. I'd say right now, uh, all of them that are on the market now, I didn't mention NVIDIA Shield, they're also out there kind of in beta. They're, they're a little bit wonky, but they're getting better. Um, and it'll give you a little bit of a, heads, uh, a head start on getting ahead of the curve. So to summarize, Mario is out, or at least older, and mobile is in on TV. Thank you. Thanks, John. That was fantastic. Um, one of the things in my mind that takes a little bit further in, uh, for me is that what I think happens when you go onto a TV is that you change the mode of use of play slightly. And I think this is actually a really important lesson for people in, in general, particularly mobile developers, is to think about the context in which their games are designed to be played. Because once you start with the game on the TV, the TV stops becoming the first screen. It becomes the shared screen. Yes, exactly. Do you, do you see that? Change Absolutely. That? Absolutely. It, was, it was a real eye-opener to see people interacting with the screen. And also, by the way, multiplayer is a huge thing that comes into huge. play. Yeah. Instead of two kids sitting there hunched over their phones, they're all looking at the same thing. And if their friends are over, they're also watching, right? Exactly. And I think one of the things I learned when I was at Sony, I, I used to work on PlayStation Home, the guys who did the SingStar team, they had a completely different view of what social gaming was than we did. 
for home, PlayStation Home, it was all about people being in a virtual world, talking to each other, not being in the same space. But for the SingStar team, it was all about how did they use that shared environment, that, that living room environment. And I think that's going to be an incredibly interesting thing. You know, what's going to happen with, you know, when, when I talk to Simon and Jacob about Subway Surfers, they're, they're now trying to open their minds about what they're going to do with this wider context, you know. I'm not sure they know yet. I mean, we'll see. No, in fact, Subway Surfers is one of the few apps that's only portrait mode. Yeah, so that was great. one thing we worried about. A few of the portrait mode apps, there's the black vertical bars on the side. We said, oh, this doesn't look quite right. It turns out at least kids, you know, 6 to 12, don't care. They're just excited to play. So we've got any questions? Any questions? So I'm gonna, on that note, then, I'll thank John very much. I think it was a great presentation.